Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at the Brother ADS-3000N. This is a super high-speed document scanner that uh, will send documents over your network to your computer. I've got uh, 17 pages I'm loading up here right now, so you can see how fast this goes. Uh, this will scan both sides of the page simultaneously. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, and you can see here, it really does crank away. Uh, we've got 17 pages. We're shooting down to my network attached storage device in the basement at a really good clip here. So there you go. You can see how fast all of this stuff can scan on here. It's max speed, they say, is 50 pages per minute. It'll scan up to 600 DPI optically, uh, which you just saw there was a color 300 DPI scan. And continuing our policy now of very full and open disclosures on the channel, I received this product through the Amazon Vine program free of charge. I am allowed to keep this product at the end of the six month review period, but I am taxed on the value of this product as it was sent to me. Now, I should also tell you though that Brother has no direct relationship to me in this transaction and that they send the product to Amazon. Amazon pairs it up with Amazon Vine members of which I am one, uh, and then they send you the product to review. So neither Brother nor Amazon is paying for this review. So let's take a closer look at the hardware now. There are three buttons up here for uh, sending documents over your network. And on the back, uh, you've got a spot to plug in ethernet. There's no Wi-Fi on here, so you have to plug it in directly to uh, an ethernet jack, either on your router or somewhere on your network. Uh, you also have a USB 3.0 uh, port there for plugging in a PC, uh, and of course your power adapter and a Kensington lock to keep it locked down on the desk. This is about a $700 scanner, so if you have this in the workplace, you may want to invest in one of those Kensington lock systems to keep it from walking away. Now, I recommend actually not using the software that they give you with this scanner. There are certain things you may want to install, like the OCR software from ABYY and a few other uh, things that it came with, but uh, the driver software, I think it's a little bit too intrusive so it actually stays resonant in memory. If you're not scanning all that often, the software is just always kind of there waiting for you to plug the scanner in to push the button. Uh, so what I recommend doing is getting their OCR software loaded on, but not the brother software, because this is so useful over the network, you don't really need to have anything on your computer to scan. What you can do is just push one of these buttons as we did at the beginning of the video and send the document out to some network drive uh, on your network. And if you're in a workplace, you most likely have file shares that you can connect to to send these documents off to. And then you can load it into the OCR software after the fact to do whatever you want to do with it because the software itself really is confusing, uh, not really useful, uh, and I think it's much better just to use it over the network and you'll see some examples of how that works in a minute. But if you insist on plugging it into your computer, uh, you can push this button here to initiate a scan to your computer. Uh, there's also an ability here to scan to a USB drive. So you have a USB port here. This is a USB 2.0 port. Uh, you can plug in a USB stick, hit this button, and you can scan to that stick, unplug the stick, and walk away with your PDF document. You can configure all this stuff as well uh, in the web-based control panel. And of course, you got a power button here. Now, once you get it connected to your network, you can connect to its web-based control panel just using your web browser. And if you have a hard time finding the IP address of the scanner when you first connect it, uh, my suggestion would be to download their mobile app because the mobile app will actually find the scanner on the network automatically for you and tell you what the IP address is. You can take that address out of your phone, type it into your web browser, and you will get to this screen. It is a lot easier to go to it this way uh, than installing the PC software to get uh, the same configuration options. And I also found, because when I first installed the PC software, I installed the uh, connected via USB option, which meant that I didn't get any of this network configuration on my PC when I installed this. I actually had to uninstall the software and then reinstall it uh, with the network option in order to get this. So save yourself the trouble, just plug it into your network, find out what its IP address is, connect with your web browser, and you can go to town configuring it. I'm not gonna show you everything because there is a ton of stuff to look at, but I'm gonna show you the most important stuff here. Uh, so on the scan section here, you have uh, the option to turn on or off multi-feed detection. I'm gonna show you how that works in a minute, but basically if it uh, takes in more than one page at a time, it'll stop right when it does it uh, so that you don't go through a 30 page document and discover that it's missing pages 17, 12, and 11 or whatever. You can uh, deal with the problem right when it happens uh, and then scan the remaining pages so you don't have uh, any missed scans when it goes through that. I'll show you how that works again in a second. We've got a little test document we'll run through here. Uh, the scan file name, you can set up basically templates for the name. So for example, uh, the BRN thing here is the serial number of the scanner. That one's kind of baked in, but you can uh, use estimate report order sheet, and you can call it sales order or something. And what it'll do is use this to start the file name and then append like a date and time to the end of it. And you can set different uh, file names based on which delivery method you will be using. Uh, you can set up your scan to USB options here as well, very similar to what you saw before. You can also scan to P 
PCs over the network. So if your PC is loaded with that brother software, uh, you can configure one of the buttons on here to uh, fire that off to a computer destination directly if you wish to do that. So that's one way to uh, also use the PC software. But again, I think what you're gonna see here is going to be a lot more useful. So uh, for scanning to the network without involving a PC, uh, you have two steps to take. The first is you have to go to this option here, scan to FTP, SFTP, network and SharePoint. And you've got 25 different profiles that you can set for the device. And uh, what you see here at the top here is profile one is set to network as is two, and profile three is set to SFTP, and the rest are just set to regular FTP. So your options are you can connect via FTP, secure FTP. Uh, network means that you can connect over uh, just a straight Samba or a Windows networking connection. So any Windows compatible network share, whether it's running on a Linux server, a Mac, or a network attached storage device, uh, is accessible to this on the network, uh, and you'll be able to uh, send your PDF document directly into that device uh, like we'll be doing with the WD MyCloud in a minute. It also supports authentication. So if you have a username and password that you have to type in to get to those network shares, you can put that into the, into the scanner with this software and it will automatically log in and drop off the document every time you scan it over there. So it's really very smart about how it does that. And you have to tell it uh, what these profiles are going to be before you go to the next step, which is the scan to uh, network profile here. So now you saw before that uh, option three, profile three was set to SFTP. Uh, so now if I go into here, I can configure exactly what all that SFTP uh, settings should be. So you do have uh, to do that first step to tell it what kind of uh, thing the profile is going to be and then you configure it uh, with the uh, second step here. And you can see here with my WD MyCloud, we have it set to uh, connect to its IP address. Uh, it's going into a directory off of its public folder. I am using the, uh, the, the baked in uh, uh, thing there for the file name, but I can maybe change that to estimate. Uh, you can go down and you can see a few of the other options on here. Uh, you also have the ability to uh, decide whether or not you're going to do the two-sided scanning. So you could turn it off by default or have it go off the long edge or short edge. So basically what you can do is uh, configure each profile for the types of documents that you might scan in. So if you never have a document that's double-sided, you can turn off the double-sided scanning if you want uh, just to uh, reduce the, 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 the unlikely event of it detecting a, a blank page or something and or not detecting a blank page and scanning it in. Uh, so you can see some of the things you can do there. If you want to speed it up a little bit, you can uh, turn off the skip blank page detection, but honestly, it scans really quickly. So I would actually leave that on so you don't get a lot of those blank pages on there. You can also set the sensitivity, again, on a per profile basis here too. So a lot of granularity to uh, the configuration that you can set for each of these profiles. And then again, if you have an authentication that you need to do uh, to get to that network share, you can set it up in there. I did test that earlier with another network share on my MyCloud, work fine. So uh, if you have a password, it'll work. If you don't, it'll also work. And the uh, setting we'll do here doesn't require a password, but I did test that before. Uh, there's another option here for a scan to a network device, and that is what you use for configuring all the buttons here. So there are three buttons here. You can even write down on this little piece of paper there what they are. And the way you configure those buttons is right here. So uh, network device one is going to my WD MyCloud. I could set the uh, second one here maybe to go to an FTP server if I want to do that. And I actually haven't configured any, so let me go back to network here. Uh, so I'll go to scan to network and you can set uh, what you want it to go do there. So you saw we had two of these um, uh, network settings in there, the one with the password and the one without. So I could have this go to just another location on my network. And again, these all correlate to this screen here. So you can see uh, those two options there, WD MyCloud and password profiles one and two. When I go to scan to network device and I select what I'm looking to do, if I go to network, it'll go through those profiles and find uh, the devices I've pre-configured and I can set it up there. So you only have three buttons, but 25 profiles. So if you wanna change it up, you have to go into the web-based control panel, change those assignments, and then you can push the button and it'll go to that uh, new spot. So if you, you know, if you only have three things to send to, great. Uh, if you have more, you'll need to go in every time to reconfigure where those buttons go to uh, when you want to send out a scan. Okay, so hopefully I didn't put you to sleep yet. That was the configuration. I tried to be as quick as possible. So now we're gonna do some scanning and a couple of different scenarios here. So you can see I've got one green button lit up here. That's the button we had configured before to the WD MyCloud. If we had a computer connected, this would be lit up. And if I had configured uh, these other two network locations, those would be lit up too. Now I've got a USB stick here. So I'm gonna just pop this in there so you can see what happens. So 
When the stick connects, the uh, device will read the card to make sure it can write to it. Uh, and now we've got a USB option also. So I have the choice here when I put this document in uh, to either send it to that stick or send it over the network, which is what we're going to do. Now the document we're scanning is just something that came off an inkjet printer. Uh, but what I've done here is uh, put something on the back of the first page, but the last page here, the second page is blank. So when we're done, we should not have four pages but three because it should reject that last page which is completely blank. So I'm gonna push the network button here and it's going to fire that downstairs real quick. There we go. And now if we switch over to my computer which is connected to our WD My Cloud, you can see the document is already there. Now let's zoom out a little bit here. We have what looks to be three pages, hopefully. Yep, there we go. So we don't have that fourth page because it was smart enough to know that it was blank and therefore didn't uh, scan that blank page in and add it to the PDF document. You can see the quality here isn't too bad. This is off of a uh, inkjet printing here, so it's not the uh, sharpest thing you'll see, but uh, it does do very nice clean scans here from uh, the testing I've been doing over the last couple of days here. So that is pretty useful there. Now you can also scan mixed sizes of paper too. So I've got uh, two normal papers here along with a smaller brochure that I'm going to stick in as well. So we'll stick in the uh, two pieces of paper here first and then we'll load in uh, the little pamphlet here as well. I'll hit the scan button and it should grab all of those things without uh, too many issues here. So let that go ahead and scan in. So it's the first page, the second page, and now the brochure, which is smaller, no problem. And we'll switch over to our computer screen here. And as you can see, uh, it brought in, hopefully, uh, the full document here. Yep, so page one, page two, uh, and the little brochure, which was a double-sided document as well. All right, now we're gonna take a look at what happens when it does a multi-feed where it grabs two pages at once. Now, it's been very reliable, so I haven't been able to reliably get it uh, to do a multi-feed, which is a good thing. You definitely don't want it grabbing more than one page at a time. So what I've done is a simulation uh, is taped a business card here to the second document in the stack. So I'm gonna load these things up. We're gonna hit our network button like we did before, scan over the network, and uh, what'll happen is it'll get by this first page, and then halfway through the second page, it's gonna pick up that business card and it's going to halt itself. Now the only issue with this multi-feed detection is that while it works, uh, if you are scanning in a large document, uh, you have to start all over again every time it does a multi-feed. So you can't pick up where you left off uh, when you're in network mode or scanning to a PDF to a computer. The one exception on the computer side is that if you were scanning to JPEG using the Brother software, which I don't like, uh, you could uh, stop it fix the error and then continue, but then you've got a pile of JPEGs that you have to convert into a PDF file when you're done, which is a real pain, especially if you don't have a problem, you still have to do all that extra work to get yourself a PDF there. The one exception though, is if you're using the mobile app, uh, what'll happen is, is it'll send over whatever images it scanned until it got locked up. You can convert those to a PDF on the phone, uh, continue on the scanner with the rest of the documents. You'll get a second PDF, but you can always merge those two PDFs together and then you can go from there. So maybe scanning to the mobile phone, especially if you know you're going to have uh, some documents that might be problematic, might be the way to do it. They also recommend, by the way, if you have thick paper or trying to scan in credit cards or something to disable that detection in your profile uh, to prevent a, uh, a false alarm. So now let's take a look though at that mobile app and see how you can scan over the network to your phone or tablet. All right, here we are with the mobile app, and as you can see, we don't have many options to do here other than to click on the scan button to scan some things in. We do have the ability to check out uh, how the health of the scanner is at the moment. Uh, this is very easy to configure. As I mentioned at the outset, when you load up the app for the first time, it will find the scanner on the network and uh, you're good to go. So really simple configuration there. So what we're gonna do here uh, is actually load up some documents. So we've got uh, four of the pages we scanned earlier. I'm just gonna stick them in the scanner like so. And instead of actually hitting a button, we're going to operate the scanner remotely via our phone. This cable here is just to connect to my video system or we're otherwise connected to my Wi-Fi network. Now note that the scanner is plugged in via ethernet, uh, but my phone is on the same network as uh, this ethernet connection is, and that's why they can see each other. I'm gonna go back to the app here. I'm gonna tap on the scan button, and you can see we have some options here. It doesn't do auto page detection uh, when you're in the app. So you have to tell it what size paper you're scanning. Uh, you do have some options for a color, a faster color scan or black and white. Uh, you can also enable or disable two-sided uh, scanning here. And we have the blank page detection on. So what I'm gonna do now is go back to our other angle here, uh, click on scan on the phone. That will initiate the scan over the network. And you can see our pages are flying in here. We'll go back to the phone image here. And what it's going to first ask is if we're done. So we can keep adding pages to this document, but uh, I'm done here. So we're gonna wait for it to catch up here, get that data. I'm going to tap on done. And uh, when I do so, you can see we've got the documents 
uh, on screen here. And I want to point something out here because uh, this is one feature that's lacking from this scanner that I've seen on some of the Fujitsu's that I really like. And uh, that is, it isn't smart enough to know uh, inside of its uh, scanner guts here uh, what side is up on paper. One of the things the Fujitsu iX500 that I really like does is that it knows uh, just within its own firmware uh, what the right side up is on a piece of paper. So when you're scanning over the network or scanning to a mobile device, it will uh, see that it was upside down and make it right side up. This one does doesn't do that, uh, at least in its network scanning or in its mobile phone scanning. I think the software might have some, the PC software might have some detection capability for that, uh, but this doesn't have it. Uh, so you have to go in and, and actually rotate those pages first. Uh, you will see though that it did skip three blank pages, so we had a couple of uh, blank backs to papers which it was able to do. I'm just going to tap on the edit button here. I can pretty quickly go in and just uh, change the orientation of these documents here. So we'll hit done there, uh, go to the next one. But you can see this is time consuming, especially if you didn't uh, have all your documents in the right order when you first scanned them in. Uh, it would have been nice to have that kind of built into the scanner's uh, uh, smarts here. But uh, you can go ahead and fix that. And when we're done, we'll tap on done here. And I can hit the share button at the lower left-hand corner and then send it to a bunch of different uh, applications. So I can drop it into my Evernote. I can email it to myself as a PDF. Uh, lots of other options. Pretty much anything you can do with a uh, iOS device insofar as sending a PDF to something uh, you can do on here. So pretty flexible there, uh, pretty helpful to be able to use your phone and just initiate a scan and pull the document essentially over your network. So pretty nice scanner, very fast, uh, seems to be scanning very reliably for me, very clean images coming out of it. Uh, my only gripes are that it lacks a little bit of intelligence, especially related to uh, the multi-feed detection where you have to pretty much start over in almost every instance when it does detect the multi-feed uh, and the fact that it's not able to internally detect the orientation of the paper. So if you've got a big document and you know four or five pages or more are in different orientations, you're gonna have to go in manually and kind of flip them around. So one thing that I like better on the Fujitsu is that. Uh, one thing though about the Fujitsu's is that they are very um, draconian in how many computers you can connect to them over the network. So while this one kind of just plugs into your network and will send files anywhere you want, uh, the Fujitsu actually has to be paired up with a network computer and that's the only one it can operate with until you switch to another one and you have to install their software in. So what I really like about this one is the fact that it can work independent of a computer. You can plug it into your network, uh, send documents to anything that can take a document, whether it's an FTP or a Windows file share, and you have a lot of flexibility for uh, how you get these documents to your devices. So that is again the Brother ADS 3000N and this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.